every single day that you just wouldn't go a day without. I love food. Mm. COVID, I'm not going to lie. I turned into one little chef. The gym. Mm. Oh man, my trainer's going to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> I'd probably say food as well. Actually, no, can I change it? Money. <laughs> Money. 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 Oh, makes me very happy. Okay. Yeah. Money, yes. yes. It's, very, it's not a myth. It makes me very happy. It's not, she said no food. Yeah. Money, please. Now I Money. Feel <laughs> Money, she can buy the food. There you yeah. go. And the yeah. car. Yeah. I'm just thinking, if I didn't have money or food, I need money. Then we can talk more about yeah. it as well. I can't believe I said phone now. <laughs> <laughs> I want to retract that one. <laughs> Hello, hi, and welcome to the But You're a Woman podcast brought to you by Mixtape Madness, where we speak to women of all roles that have a part to play in the music industry. Our mission is to uncover the realities of being a woman in this industry, as well as being a resource to the many that would love to pursue a music related career. My name is Khalees, the creator and host of this show. I'm a presenter, a producer, and a DJ, and it is an absolute pleasure to introduce all of these guests to you and to speak to them about their experiences and everything. So without further ado, I have my co-host here, who's an amazing, amazing, amazing creative. And her name is... Roshan. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for that warm intro. That is um, absolutely fine. I pick love up your everyone. shoes. They're all right, isn't it? They're all doing Jordan a lot. Jordan 1s. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have no Rolex yet, but soon come. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's loading, it's loading. So please, Roshan, tell them about yourself. Okay, where do I start? So I go by the name of Russian. I'm an artist manager to Alakai Hotshot Harley. Mm -hmm. You're going to cuss me if I don't do the hotshot. Um, I also look after partnerships um, for an agency called Warm Street. So I look after partnerships for Ray and Nephew UK, Magnum, doing some stuff for Netflix. There's some other stuff, you know? Okay. I go on. Like, you left that one out there. You know, but it's just <laughs> that's the big one, isn't it? That's the Netflix. Okay, okay. <laughs> The big, big dog, big league. I mean, little one, but we get there. We're getting okay, there. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it's amazing to have you on. Like, I'm Thank really, you. I'm really honoured to have you here. Thank you, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for having me. That's okay. It's amazing, and as well as Russian, as my co-host, mm -hmm. we have Marissa. Hello. Uh, Marissa is a manager. Yeah. You work. You worked with loads and loads of people. Please tell them about yourself. Um. Oh, I'm Marissa. I'm an artist manager, and I'm also an A and R. Um, I work in publishing A&R, so I look after songwriters, producers and artists, but basically just the whole songwriting and creation process yeah. of the music. Um, I manage a few developing artists. Um, prior to being a manager, I was an A&R at a label, so I was on the record side, but now I've kind of ventured over into just management and publishing. Amazing, amazing. And how are you finding it? Do you enjoy it? I love my job. I'm so blessed. I love it. Like... I sit there and I'm listening to music all day. I'm like, this is my job. Like, I love it. Like, yeah, I'm blessed. That's fantastic. I'm so happy to hear that. And thank you for having me. No, you're absolutely welcome. You're absolutely welcome. As well as Marissa, we have Shanice. Hey, hey. Please tell them about yourself. Hi everyone, Shanice. Most people call me Shen. Um, Artist Relations Manager at YouTube. And I kind of work with like artists and culture at YouTube. I've been there for four years now, which seems like it's gone so far. I know, right? Proper, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's gone quick. I've been there for four years. I was at Columbia yeah. before, Columbia Records at Sony, marketing assistant, and then got headhunted to go over YouTube in 2019. We love that Amazing. headhunt, you know. Yeah. Just put that in there. Yeah. Just put that in there. How are you finding it? Do you, do you enjoy it as well? I love it. It's, it's so nice to be able to work with so many different artists, from developing artists, established, kind of help them like dis demystify YouTube. I think that's one big thing, especially with black artists, like monetization is such a big thing for us at the moment as well. Absolutely. Knowing that you can make money on YouTube and kind of have that as your point of like having all your music. So mm -hmm. I think it's super exciting. I love it so much. Absolutely. Amazing. I was so happy to hear, honestly. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Last but not least, we have Sarah. Hi. And uh, she is a manager to her little sister, um, Leanne of course, from Little Mix. Not a little name at all, <laughs> but um, please tell them about yourself. Yeah, so my name's Sarah. Um, I am Leanne's manager. Um, she's my little sister, as you said. Um, been doing this now for coming up three years, but let's include COVID in that. Mm. So it doesn't actually feel like it's been that long. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, and I also am the co-founder of the Black Fund, which we founded together, which is our charity. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. 
that's so it's so cool that like um you've moved into like the charity space like how has that been for you to be honest I did a lot of charity work when I was at university because I did a community arts degree and a lot of what we had to do was like go into the community and like work with um community groups so I kind of had experience in that sector anyway probably more so than the music side if I'm honest like when it when we were actually talking about doing the charity that was more like okay I know what to do here like I've done this I know what I'm doing absolutely um, 100% so yeah I feel like that part of my job is almost like it's almost like the healing process like you just meet people that are just all, all different types of people you there's no egos like people that are almost like you know dealing with different situations or issues and you can go and help them in certain things. And it's a completely different side to like the reality of being in the industry and egos and, mm. you know, like- It's like the humbling. heart and soul. It's mm. very humbling. Mm -hmm. Like when you come out of a day doing something to the Black Fund, it just feels like a release. It's like, oh, even though your week was crap or stressful, yeah. or like you everyone wants someone. you to reply to an email like yesterday, yep, yep, like yep. that side of things. It's like the heat, like, it's like you can go back and just be like, oh, I needed that day. Mm, yeah, 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 absolutely. So my question to you all is, being a woman in this industry, has there been any difficulty or any awkwardness or any like, you know, I hate to use the word, but like discrimination in your journey thus far? I'll start with you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wouldn't say discrimination. Mm. I would say more I think with guys, like it's pretty much, I don't know if you guys would agree, it's kind of like a boys club when you're coming into it. Yeah. Right? Until obviously you meet these lovely ladies and it's like you all kind of come together. But I feel like I've experienced like, I wouldn't say chauvinistic. I'm trying to be nice about it. Yeah, yeah. But, don't be nice yeah, now. You don't have to be nice. <laughs> it's, 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 it's trying to like, articulate it in such a polite way without naming and shaming. Mm. But I have experienced like on my journey, like a guy kind of, this is kind of early in, in my in my um journey so getting into it you know tr working on ideas and whatever and it's just kind of like i don't know it's like they took it as like i wanted to like date them and i'm like no nah. like, but that was oh. never a conversation i'm yeah. like yeah huh? it was implied yeah i'm not gonna give up the sweet the good goods for, mm. for the it's kind of wrong to say this what am i gonna <laughs> I have even experienced that, that. Like they don't even think about. Yeah, things like it's that. like they, they, they. You know, like you're getting on with a guy, and it's like you're bouncing great ideas, and it's mm -hmm. like, I have kind of experienced that. It. I'm not gonna say it made me feel intimidated, but I was a bit like, raw. They're not lying, you know. <laughs> this is a real thing. Mm -hmm. Like when, yeah, I, I saw an interview with Ashanti, and she was speaking about an incident that happened with her. I'm not, I'm not gonna mention it. On Absolutely. Here. Um, where <laughs> it's mixtape man. You can do what you want. <laughs> yeah, sure. Where um, a guy had kind of basically said it was around a record, right? I think, like for her to kind of get the record that she had to, you know, do the do. And I'm mm. like. Why is that normal? Like, why is that okay? Furthermore, when you don't have kids and you don't have daughters, if a next mm. man's doing that to you, you you're not ready to hunt mm. them down. Like, it's weird to me. It's completely flips it's, when it's when it's you and yeah. it's your personal mm. life. And it's them just like throwing their weight around and stuff like that. But I feel like that's only like once has ever happened. Mm. And I feel like it's kind of like how you come out of it the other side. So I kind of was like, okay, so this is actually a real thing. Mm. So you just have to stay woke, mm. you know? But it's just, yeah, I, I feel think like that was... Yeah. <laughs> Once it happens the first time, it's it's enough for you to realize like, rah, like this is real. Yeah, they're gonna mm -hmm. like just try a thing, mm -hmm. and it's just it's it's something that where as women we're not willing to accept. It's not okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is my personal space. I don't need you grabbing on me in any you know type I mean? of way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's not it's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. But that was my experience. Yeah. Top line. Yeah. <laughs> Marissa, I'll go to you. Yeah, I've had multiple experiences. But I would say working at Sony, like f I felt like I didn't feel any discrimination whatsoever. I felt really supported, mm -hmm. supported, but transitioning into a manager and being like a lone wolf mm -hmm. and broadening my network mm -hmm. and having to speak with presidents of labels. And I've definitely felt like um, I was being spoken to differently mm -hmm. um, because of my gender, it felt. Um, so yeah, there been many conversations and situations where I have felt- A little belittled or? Belittled, yeah, dismissed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, multiple times, um, unfortunately, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. 
makes you more resilient though. I was literally just to say that, it just mm. makes you stronger. Mm. Um, but also like at the moment, I'm really lucky to have amazing men in music around me who support me Absolutely. and make me feel great. Um, so also want to shout them out because they're like, I have sick men around me, man. Like the people I work with, like they're like proper real people, mm. amazing people. Uh, but there are others who aren't. Um, this is the way of the game, right? Yeah, but you know what? Like it's sad because to me, it's just normal. Not normal. Like normalized. Normalized. And I just get on with it. It's great that we can have these conversations, but I just get on with it. And I'm like, cool, speak to me like that. But I'm going to do my job better than you do your job. Mm. So bye. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? So. Absolutely. Yeah, loads of times. But I'm just getting on with it. I'm just like, cool, whatever. 100%. Shinny, same question. Th this is a really good question. I think it, it's definitely happened. And I think I've just done a bl had a blind eye to it. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, this yeah. is a music industry. People always say there's all these bad things happen. So you kind of assumed it. It just, you assume mm. that you're like, okay, this is how I'm going to deal with it. But I think a lot of the time I have a, well, I have a lot of really great men as well around. Um, Amazing. Especially starting out in the industry, you're just like, this is a whole new world to navigate. Crazy, right? yeah. It's so crazy. So I think it, the power of allies mm -hmm. and mentors yeah. yep, yep, yep. is so, so important. My, mm -hmm. People might think, oh, you, you need them because yeah. this industry could Cut throat. chew you alive. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's not uh, for everyone. It's not It's not yeah. for everyone. And I think, again, a, like a, there's some men that will throw their weight around if they've been in the industry for a long time and be like, oh, so you're the new kid on the block. You need to kind of- And they think they know yeah. better, right? They think they know mm, better. Cool. And you're like, okay, cool. And, and they, think we're, they think we're stupid. Yeah. yeah it's and just, we ain't. Mm. No, it's like- And when Kadeesan will come up with fresh ideas, you know, trying exactly. to keep your <laughs> thing <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think it's just owning those spaces as well. And like, don't put up with any shit. Mm. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear, mm. sorry. But don't put up with any shit because- Oh, you because, can swear, don't worry about it. Um, oh, we can. Okay, yes. Oh, no, I know. I know. Like, you know how many times I've been like, but I haven't. Yeah, yeah but okay. then, like, don't put up with anything and actually don't be scared. If something does happen, say it. So I think a lot of the time people are a bit like, oh, this guy's done this or that guy's done that. No, not, name and shame. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. 100%. 100. Yeah, you're doing an amazing job and you shouldn't mm. feel scared to go into work or feel a certain way mm. and own those spaces. Because a lot of us, especially like black women, mm. We're in these spaces, not a lot of us. So we need to make sure that our voice is heard mm, and yeah. present, even if it might feel scary or people trying to intimidate you, you have to make sure that you know that your voice is very, very valuable yeah. mm. and that it's not something that you should be like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to say this because a man might feel but, like but I'm overstepping. With that, right? Uh -oh. Have you ever felt like, you know, like sometimes when you do speak up, yeah. you're already labelled as like, the black woman, the angry Hundred, black woman. I've I'm been, like, yeah. honestly, I'm like, there have been situations <laughs> where I've been, I'm being called aggressive. Why are you shouting at me? Do you some joke? Tika being like the same I'm scared time. of yeah. you, Marissa. Yeah. No, no one. Uh, swear uh, on scared. my life. Somebody said on my scared. life. On my life. Oh someone my said to me, I'm scared. But I feel or like something I'm around, uh, something around that. Just for me calling up and asking you a question. Mm but I'm shouting and I'm no. aggressive. I'm just assertive. But this is what mm -hmm. I think, like everything that happened with Black Lives Matter was really important because a lot of people didn't know about microaggressions mm -hmm. and you saying certain yeah. things or like, mm -hmm. if, if I change my hair, it doesn't mean you have to comment yeah. every yeah. single yeah. Yeah. time. A little Susan in the office. Oh, I like what you've done, honey. It's a bit more up. What have you it's done to point. your hair? What's, what's that then? <laughs> you dyed your hair and all of a sudden it's longer. <laughs> Can I but like, no, literally all of those things, I think it's like, there's a lot of more education now. Yeah. So I think mm -hmm. men or other women, et cetera, know how to kind of maneuver in the workplace. Yeah. Things yeah. can't just happen now, which yes. is great, mm. but also it should have been happening in the first place. 100%. Yeah. But everything's a journey. So absolutely. That's what it's I would all say. And, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Same question to you, Sarah. Um, I kind of knew like a bit about how women are treated in the industry before I kind of took on the role. And I'll be honest, I haven't experienced anything myself but also, if you think of my position, I'm Leanne's sister and Leanne's been in this industry for a very long time. So she's very headstrong. Like she walks in a room and she says exactly what she wants. So people may think twice about saying certain things to me because I'm her sister. Have, if I wasn't her sister and I was maybe like, you know, a manager that wasn't related to her, I might be, you know, spoken to differently. But I'll be honest, everyone that I've worked with so far, they've been so supportive. Like we have such a good team around us. Um, mixture of men and women and I can't fault anyone so far um 
and obviously me not being experienced in certain things they're all really they're all there to really help and to support me and sometimes as well like when I first started I'd be like oh should I like jump in and speak my idea because one thing about me and this is probably where it stemmed from me like, wanting to be Leanne's manager and Leanne wanting me to be. Yeah. I've always had ideas, like even back in the day when she'd be like, right, we're doing a video and this is my section, what should I do? And I'd be like, right, do this and do that. Like it's always been where I, where I like, I love to be doing that. Mm -hmm. So i will be sitting in the room and everyone's like saying ideas and like, I'll say what I, what I think and everyone's like, yeah, like, yeah. and that's really nice. Cause I've, you know, not having music experience and feeling like you can't open your mouth. Like I've never really experienced that, but Hopefully that's not because I'm her sister and they're scared. It's more just because you got dope people ideas. are yeah. working around, you know, they're all- When really I first you. started, oh my God, I never used to say a word. No, in I'm, meetings, I'm you know, like in those big boardrooms, <laughs> yeah. I used yes. to be so scared mm. to say anything. And then there was one day where I just said it and everyone's like, oh, that's really good idea. And then I just built my confidence and built my confidence, mm. but it's scary. It's really scary. Yeah. So that is our time. We are now signing out. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you for mixtape. Oh, for mixtape. Oh yes, thanks for mixtape. But also thank you mixtape <laughs> for supporting this podcast and pushing it. And it has been an absolute pleasure to bring this to you as well as bringing all of these women to you too. Please follow, like, share, subscribe, send to your nan, send to your mum, send to your aunt, uncle, <laughs> friend, family, cat, dog, everything. Um, and we shall see you on the next episode.